Hello, my name is Al Hamar Osama. I've been working on Fastable for the last couple of weeks under the Google Summer of Code program. In this video, I will try to highlight some of the implemented slash improved features within the Morphic Fastable package. And at the end, I will try to mention some of the future milestones that need to be targeted. The first feature that I will highlight is the cell selection mode. Now initially Fastable support only row selection. Now they support both cell and row selection modes. To use one of those you need to either send the B cell selection mode or the B row selection mode to an instance of the Fastable. The row mode is the default one. Now when using the cell selection mode with a Fastable you can either select uh, single cells you can select multiple cells using the command or the control key you can select a range of cells using the uh, shift key and you can of course select the first and the last cell in the table using the home and origin key in, from the keyboard you can also select the entire table using the command or control a shortcut Now, when the mouse move selection is set to true with fast table, you will activate another selection mode using the mouse pointer. Uh, in that case, you will use the mouse pointer to select multiple multiple cells by dragging the uh, the, the pointer of the mouse over them. To provide a nicer and cleaner abstraction to manage and instantiate cells, I've implemented several cell widgets for its type of data, for instance a cell checkbox for boolean data, a date cell morph for dates, a drop list cell morph for a uh, list inside the cell, a label cell morph that need to represent simply a simple string, a text edit cell morph that use a wrap text field to render a text field inside a cell. Now each cell widget provides a custom constructor with the needed or the requirement information to instantiate a cell. For example, a reference to the fast table, the content of the cell, whether the cell is editable or not, and the exact position of the cell's data inside the data source, I mean the row and the column. Each cell widget can either provide its own editor or it can use a default one implemented inside the data source. For instance, the fast table date cell morph, since it needs to provide a calendar to select the date from, so it needs to provide its own editor. To do that, the date cell morph, first of all, overrides the has editing provider and send a true, and then inside the show editor, it instantiates the calendar pop-up and show it to the user so the date so he can change or select uh, a date another example is the fast table label cell morph since it doesn't provide any custom editor it will use a default editor implemented inside the data source the editing provider simply uh, show a text edit floating text edit uh, morph uh, on top of the cell and uh, he will uh, update the data cell accordingly. Now for the header, I have implemented a fast table header column cell morph that abstract all the requirement operation in the header, like for example, uh, sorting the data and managing the mouse related event. Now here a simple application to illustrate each one of those cell widgets. The first and second column contains a label cell morph. The only difference is that the first column contains an editable one. The third column contains a text edit cell morph. In the fourth column we have a checkbox cell morph. The fifth column contains a drop list cell morph from which you can choose an item to be displayed in the selected cell. 
Now the sixth column contains a date cell morph that display a calendar pop-up from which you can choose the date. Now each column data can be of course sorted according to the type of data inside. Now to get this view you need to implement a data source uh, that inherits from the simple data source and provide a message for each one of those columns. For example, the first column is a fast table label cell morph that sets the editable to property to true. So the content can be editable. In the second column, we have the same thing. The third column, we have a text edit cell morph. In the fourth column, we have a checkbox cell morph. The fifth column contains a job list cell morph. The only difference with the job list cell morphs is that you need to specify the data source for each cell, for the data source from which the selected item will be chosen. The sixth column contains a date cell morph. Now the final step is to associate each column ID with the uh, message that will display or create each cells. And you need also to specify the name of the property explicitly so it can the content of the column can be sorted properly. When using those custom cells widget, the cells manage their own data in the data source. When the cell content got changed, it will update its value in the data source using the update data source message and then send a fast table cell content changed announcement with the old value and the newly introduced one. This announcement can be intercepted from outside the cell for custom actions. The update data source message triggers the table refresh and that after updating the cells data in the data source thanks to the cell position property now that the cell widget knows about. Fast table already provides the possibility to change the width for each column using the B resizable. I have implemented the B resizable rows that provide the possibility to change the height of uh, the rows of fast table or the rows of the fast table at the same time which can be handy in some scenarios it is also possible to change the height of uh, single rows independently of the others but the, but the implementation at the moment is a little biggy and needs more work for more information and in-depth details about my work please check my Faro Corner blog the source code can also be found at the following GitHub repository and will be merged soon to the main image. Thank you.